I went and started looking at, um, as per our conversation on the safeties, a lot of people were saying, you know what, that's a great idea. Start signing guys to extensions. Mm -hmm. Like start paying your guys. Poyer deserves an extension. And Poyer already has two years left on his deal. So it's not this year. It's this year and next year. Okay. So it got me thinking, what other bills can you throw out there to do extensions with? If you want to see two guys eating in a car, click that subscribe button. Now, we have to be very careful with this because guys that are still on the rookie deal can't be extended yet. Right, and that's kind of part of it that I want to get into because a lot of mm -hmm. people were saying, well, extend Trey White. Well, you, you actually can't even talk to him about that right now. Yeah, it's, it's not, not. It's not even allowed. You're not allowed to talk to him. Now, Trey still has technically three years left on his deal. He's got this year, <laughs> next year, and then the fifth year option, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the way that works, we'll, we'll go into. That's no problem because the, the rookie deals are a little bit weird. Um, but, the boy, boy, the Bills don't have a lot of guys that can offer contract extensions. To. Really? Yeah, for 54 guys in the roster, you'd think there'd be plenty to talk extension to. Matt Barkley, you're not signing Barkley to extension. You just gave him two more years. So he's got okay. this year and next year. Derek Anderson, you're not. No. Lorenzo Alexander, you're not. No. Dawkins is still on his rookie deal. Milano is on his rookie deal. Uh -huh. Trey White's on his rookie deal. Uh -huh. Yep. There's uh, a lot. So, you ready? Ray Ray still on his rookie deal? If he's still on the team. I know. You keep thinking that McKenzie is going is usurping there's him. There's no reason to keep McKenzie and Ray Ray McLeod. There's just no reason. Now, yeah, I understand but, McLeod was injured and McKenzie got the jump on him there, but there, I mean, you're looking at the same type of player. How, can, unless Ray Ray's playing special teams, I don't I don't know what benefit he's really You know what's him. better than one crawfish dinner? Five crawfish dinner. I don't even know what that's from. Oh, my God. What? What is that from? It was the. It was the. It was the. Uh, it was the antagonist in uh, Waterboy. Oh. What? You picked the most random line. Well, I'm saying what's better that movie? What's better than one Isaiah McKenzie? Two Isaiah McKenzies. <laughs> Matt Milano, right? Yes. Milano's going to be an unrestricted free agent in 2021. So the way this works, when a player's on a rookie deal, okay, you can't talk to them until December 31st of their third season, okay? So this year? This season, they can start talking in to in December, right? Okay. So basically January is when they can really start talking extension. So they can, they can sign Milano to an extension January 1st of 2020, okay? Okay. Even though he'll still be on the team, right, mm -hmm. in, into the 2021 season, right, because he'll be, he's, he's making 710000 this year, he's making 800000 next year, right? So he hits free agency eventually, but that's 2021, so you can start talking to him about an extension now. Trey White's the same thing, only Trey White's contract is three years. Not two. They're drafted in the same draft, but Trey White's a first round pick. He gets that fifth round option. You can't sign Trey to an extension until December 31st of this season, right? Okay. All right. The same same thing, same theory applies to um, Dawkins, right? Okay. You can start talking to Dawkins about an extension this season. Now it's interesting how it works because because Trey White was taken with the 27th pick. His fifth-year option really isn't going to be a lot. No. I mean, by comparable by, you know, uh, other you know fifth-year options yeah. that we we talked a lot about with right. linebackers and stuff like that. Right. So, I mean, you look it at would be who of them to extend if, because uh, I, more Milano and White than Dawkins. Right. If all three of those guys are in their future plans, it would be who of them to extend all of them at the same time. Right. Yeah. Because then you would. spend that money now. Exactly. Yeah. You spend that um, money, and uh, you know it's. And you're buying out contract years that you don't have to. Like Trey White, I think his contract numbers are two something and three something. You know, you make, he's making nothing. Dawkins is only making one point three. Like he's not, not making anything. He's either, not making though. anything compared to the level of play that they're at. But these are the decisions you have to make, and the Bills are in a very interesting situation by having all this money and saying, you know what, these young guys, let's just lock them up. And maybe that's what they do. 
made me look at it and say, these guys that we can finally start talking extension with are our core. Let's, they're our core. Let's not mess around. Let's just sign them to extensions now. Let's get it over with. Let's buy out their years. It's gonna, is it gonna, you know, spend salary cap dollar to do so? Right, it does, but it gives you that, that team stability for the next five seasons. And we talked about it with Poyer, not so much with Hyde, but Poyer. Mm-hmm. You pay your own. Man. Once, once you take care of your own in that respect, other right. players will see that. And then, if you take, if you think you extend Poyer, and then in January you, you extend the three contracts of those guys, that's gonna snowball. Right. I mean, and everyone else will be like, hey, wait, wait, if we, if we take care of what we gotta take care of here, they'll take care of us. You know what right. I mean? Um, although I was always a proponent of the fact that you don't pay a guy for what he did, you pay him for what he's gonna do. Right. So you know what you just did? What? Unfortunately. What? So, we're always talking about young guys they should sign a free agency mm-hmm. and then have them for a number of years. Yeah. So, you're, you just opened the door that they could sign older players just for three-year contracts yeah. because it cleans out your cap. Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> like, the first day of the positive mind was Jared Valdir. Yeah. I'm like, well, they could sign him now. Yeah, three year deal. yeah why not? I mean, you're going to be backing these players up in draft picks anyway and then, you know, running through the UDFAs, those undrafted free agents, and then... If you sign those guys to like, the, if you sign those guys to one-year deals, two-year deals, like that's when the Bills picked up McKenzie off of waivers, right? Yeah, that's this is what you get. This is what happens <laughs> when you kind of play the game. But I don't think any team wants to go in saying, okay, we don't have enough starters, so we're going to need to find a lot of guys who nobody drafted. <laughs> we got to we got to use those guys to fill our team, and that's what you know. That's what the Bills Ew. did. But it just happens that in this instance, the Bills have tons of team control because of the way the contracts are structured through the CBA. So That's, they get a lot of leverage. It's crazy, really, when you look at it and you say, oh, yeah, the Bills should be signing these guys to extensions. We got them for another three, four years. You're right. We got them for nothing. Nothing. God, so financially, like, in their corner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Wow. They finally did something right. I mean, it was because they did everything wrong the first time, but whatever, we'll take it.